Hello everybody, good afternoon, how is the transmission? Can everybody hear me? Excellent. Uh, welcome to another Myersound webinar. Today we're going to talk about Compass Global Overview and today's guest lecture, lecture will be a uh, fellow Myersound colleague Oscar Barrientos. And um, but before we go to Oscar, uh, please allow me to commence with the um, usual Zoom instructions that um, we typically uh, look at prior to beginning the actual webinar itself. So I'm going to share my screen. Here we go. And let's start looking at the Zoom instructions for today's class. Okay, Compass Global View as we're about to commence, but uh, since we're using the Zoom platform, um, let's look at that first. So all of you are expected to have a window in front of you, not unlike, not unlike the one you see over here. In the bottom left corner, there is the option for you to unmute your um, microphone. Uh, next to it is the uh, option to turn on your camera. But uh, as far as asking questions are considered, we encourage you to make use of the chat. Uh, in order to get to the chat, uh, you will have to click the uh, chat balloon that you see over here. Uh, a dialogue will open up on the right hand side. Um, which is pretty self-explanatory and that means that you can address the nation by uh, putting a message in uh, in the bottom field or should you see a, a fellow colleague or a family member or a friend in the list of participants then you can also send a private message uh, to that person um, i'll be monitoring the chat so um, oscar will be doing the explanations i will be monitoring the chat um, if you have any questions please make use of the raise hand feature which is the gray button uh, on the right hand side. If you raise your hand, then I can tell that you're about to ask a question and then I'll make sure that uh, your question uh, will get answered. Um, we're about to use Compass, uh, which is our uh, control software for controlling um, um, Myersound Galaxy devices. Uh, Compass can be downloaded at the Myersound website and um, and that will be the program that will, will play a big part in uh, today's uh, webinar. So um, without further ado, um, I'm very much honored to uh, introduce you to um, fellow Myersound colleague, um, Oscar Barrientos. Um, Oscar will do the presentation today and um, uh, I'm ready to go. Um, so let's uh, move over to Oscar and um, Oscar, it's all yours. Okay, thank you, Merlin. Hello, everybody. Um, I think uh, this is my first time doing this in English, so it's gonna be awesome. Um, first of all, I want to thank you all for being here. And I want to start saying that I'm a native Spanish speaker. So I'll make my best to explain myself during this um, webinar, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen. Let me do this. Uh, hopefully you are seeing right now uh, the first slide of my presentation. Can you just tell me, Merlin, if this is right? Um, yes, sir. I can confirm okay. that I see the first slide of your presentation. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so let's get started. This is about a uh, complex, a uh, uh, global view and what I'm gonna do during this seminar is to show you uh, uh, um, how can you work with multiple processors. We're gonna use an example uh, for a real life scenario, and we're gonna use a planning sheet for signal distribution, and we're gonna see how can we work in a efficiently way with multiple uh, processors. Here you can see the topics that we're gonna see. The first one is gonna know the real life scenario that we're gonna use as an example. We're gonna see the channel uh, distribution for this uh, GIF. We're gonna see the planning sheet processors, uh, the Galaxy processor as well. We're gonna work with Compass. We're gonna use the linking preference in terms of the select and linking for some channels. And we're gonna use a global linking preference as well. 
and we're going to finish with uh, a work using all these tools. I mean, the global linking, global snapshot, and global project in order to be ready for a show like, like, like this. So this is the venue. It was a special uh, show for an artist in Colombia. Uh, he's from this city, so you can imagine that this was a very important show for him. So this is uh, the big stadium that we use for this concert. And in here, you can see a picture that was taken like two hours before the show. In here, you can roughly see uh, some big screens on the left and right side of the stage. Of course, we had main left and main right speakers. We also have some lateral line array speakers to cover uh, over this uh, area. And we also have what we call a 90 degrees lateral system to take care of this zone. The same thing for the other side, just in case we, we, we have people in there. And we actually did it. We, we have some people in those zones. So you can also see maybe roughly here three delay towers that we were using to get these uh, fire seats. In, again, this was about two hours before the show starts, so people was kind of being placed in, for the show. What was the system? The system was this. We got 60 Leo, 60 Leo M, 71100, that are the subwoofers, 52 Lion M, and 12 Lion W. Lion W is, it has a wider uh, horizontal coverage than the M model. We got 24 leopard for uh, front fields, and the, the 90 degree system we're using 26 micas. And for all of this equipment, we use nine processors, nine Galaxy processors. And, and here we can see like a zoom for, for this area. Okay, so you can see uh, how was the system over there. I'm using different colors to show uh, to let you let me show you the the, the, the the system configuration in this case we have left and la, la, and right main arrays uh, we got 15 leos plus four lines w for these two guys and we also have two uh, lateral uh, uh, systems consisting in the same amount of uh, speakers as the main and here you can see the blue uh, system over here and the, the the right lateral system over there and we use, as I told you, the 90 degree system as well that were kind of over here. Uh, we use the, the, uh, this kind of layer uh, stage. And we also have two subwoofer configuration. We got a uh, 15 flown uh, subwoofer array from the left and right um, uh, system. Oh, so, sorry, this is the, the right subwoofer and the left subwoofer array. And we also have uh, a flam subwoofer array that you can see over here. And we did like five points for front fields of each side. We got totally total 10 uh, front field sections for, for, for this near zone. Okay, here you can see um, as soon for the relay systems, we were using three relays consisting in 16 Lion M each one. And in the case of the lateral left and lateral right relays, we use 50, uh, five, sorry, five, uh, 1100 LFC. So we got some subwoofers for these two uh, relay systems. This is a plan view and a section view for, for the stadium. Here you can see uh, only kind of the half of the plan view. And in the section view, you could see the main and the subwoofers um, for, for this venue. And you also could see a little small uh, red dot that is, the, those are two, two lepers that we use as a front field. And we, we could see roughly the, the, the subwoofer uh, configuration on the ground. And here you can see the relay that was in one of the sides. Uh, and also you could see, sorry, the subwoofer array that we did for, for that area. So in here, you can roughly see the, 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 some predictions. This is a, a prediction about the subwoofers, the, the flown subwoofer array configuration. This is about the ground subwoofer array. 
And here you could see the subwoofer that uh, wa were in the um, relay area. And in here you could see a prediction with all the arrays uh, playing together. In this case, this upper right uh, prediction, we could see the front field arrays for the near field. Of course, we don't got that amount of power in terms of the color you're seeing in here. It's just an example of the coverage that we were having in there. And here you could see the section view for some um, predictions. Here you have the main and the uh, sender relay prediction. Here again, you have the, 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 the uh, no, this is the lateral uh, array. And here you could see the uh, lateral relay as well. And the 90 degree uh, array is, is this one. And of course, you could see in here the front field coverage that uh, we, we just have two boxes in there. And this is about the subwoofer array configuration that is in the flown configuration. And here you can see the, the stack for, for the uh, ground subwoofer uh, configuration. If we wanna see this uh, system in a detail, in order to see what were the, the, the channel distribution that we did in this case, you could see here that I'm doing like a zoom over this area where you can see over here and you, you can see also the channel distribution for the main system. In this case, we were using 16 channels. Um, we used channel number one to, to feed uh, the Leo one and Leo two from top to bottom. And then we go uh, from Leo three, just using one up the channel. And we do something like that in the whole system all the way to the Leo 15 actually. And then we use two more channels for the uh, lower section of the array. So we got uh, one channel sending signal to these two speakers and another channel to these uh, two other speakers. So um, we use in total, as I said, 16 channels for the main left and right uh, array system. In this case, for the flown subwoofer array configuration, as you can see, we were using a gradient style of configuration. Uh, we use 15, 1100 in there, and we use four channels to send signal to the speakers. As you could see, we have uh, the forward facing, the rear facing boxes using these uh, red arrows. You can see that we were using channel uh, one for speaker one, three, four, six, seven, and nine and the rear facing speaker were two, five, and eight in terms of the speakers, and we use channel number two for those, and we use another two channels for the lower section of this uh, array. So we are using right now a total, of four, a total of four channels in here, and a total of 16 channels for the main system. Now, we can see the lateral system. In this case, we were not using that much amount of uh, channel that we did with the main system. In this case, we are using just six channels, as you can see over here. Channel number, was, number one was feeding Leo one to Leo six. Channel number two was feeding Leo seven to Leo 10. And as you can see, we were just leading the signal like you see with the color style of uh, the channels that we are sending over here. Okay, for the lateral 90 degree uh, system, 90 degree system, we were using 13 micas and as you can see we, can, we're, we were using just three channels for this array. Those were enough for the idea that we have for this array. And uh, for the relays, we were using two configuration. This is the center relay system. We were using six channels over there. As you can see we, we got three uh, speakers that was feeding from channel number one, another three for channel two, and you could see how was the configuration in terms of the channels and the speaker uh, with this color code. As you can see, we were using six channels for the center uh, relay, and for the lateral left and right relays, we were using only five uh, channels. And as I, as I told you, we were using as well uh, 5 1100 just in the left and the right relay systems. And the configuration we did in this case, it was like a gradient stack 
a configuration for these two uh, uh, arrays. We were using four channels because as you, may ima you can imagine, we need two channels for the gradient subwoofer style of configuration and we need another two channels for, for these two guys as well. So we were using total four channels for, for this uh, array. For the front fields, uh, it was so interesting to work with this uh, configuration because besides this, the this distance between the front fields, we uh, analyzed the coverage that we were getting from the main systems. I mean, in this um, image, you can see that I have some sounds in a color way. Uh, this uh, uh, color for this area, for this uh, 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 yellow color, we are getting the coverage from the main system, just half, half of the coverage. And, and in this case, this brown color is telling you about the coverage for the lower section of the lateral system. So you have with yellow, the coverage for the lower section of the main array, the main right array. And this is about the, the coverage for the lower section of the lateral arrays. Why I'm explaining this to you? Well, I'm doing that because um, we're gonna take care of the near field area with the front fields, okay? We're gonna cover this near area with the front field uh, 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 system. But what I'm showing you in here is that we were not able to cover this area that was not covered uh, by the lower section of the main array and no cover for the lower section of the lateral array. So, so we need to take care of this uh, area that was not covered for even the, the, the main and the lateral system. So to do that, we got four leopard as a stack, for a stack uh, speaker for front field number four, that is this one. And for the other ones, we were using just two speakers. So two speakers over here, four over here for this area, and then two, 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 and same thing for the other side. So. The reason why we were using four leopards is just to get um, this sound cover, okay? Um, for the subwoofers that were on the floor, we were using five stacks. Every single stack was conformed for, uh, by three elements. We got three 1100 LFC in stack uh, grading configuration. So as you might, can imagine, we were using two channels on each of these uh, uh, stacks. So we were using total uh, 10 uh, channels for, for this configuration, 10 channels just for the left section and another 10 channels for the right section of the uh, uh, subs. And the reason uh, for that was that we need to be able to not just, the, uh, not, not just to get control for, for, for the coverage, but to uh, send some kind of uh, signal or energy over this area, as you can see in this small image. And um, by the way, we use um, Merlin uh, subwoofer uh, design um, Excel uh, for this, and it works very, very, very well. So um, the reason then why we have 10 channels over here is because we want to have something like that. And in order to do that, we need to be able to have different delays on each of these uh, stacks. So that's why we were using to a total of 10 channels. Okay, so let me change a little bit this presentation because I wanna show you this uh, planning sheet that you can download from, from Meyer Sound. In here, you could see these rectangles. Every single rectangle means one processor, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine processor. And then I want to zoom in, let me just do this, for uh, this planning sheet processor. In here you could see that we have several columns. In this column, we are dealing with the names of the inputs that we're gonna use. Uh, here are the inputs. And in this column, we are dealing with the uh, type of signal that we are gonna work with uh, this uh, processor, okay? So I can explain a little bit more using this other example. So again, we have the names in the, input, in the inputs, and the kind of input that we're gonna work with, the matrix assigns, I mean, the way that we are gonna connect input to the outputs, 
And here you can see the outputs in these columns and the name for those outputs. So as you can see, we're seeing the, the stage right number one Galaxy processor. And in this case, we're gonna feed this processor by ABB, by an ABB signal. And we're gonna use another uh, signal as a backup. Remember that this was a very important show. And in this case, we're gonna use a analog line for, for this. So you could see that I am assigning uh, all these, um, these two inputs to, to the 16 outputs in order to get signal in all of them. So I'm gonna go back to my presentation. And here you can see the planning sheet for the main left. And of course, it's gonna be the same for the main right processor. And I just explained what is happening in here. So as you could see, and you could remember, uh, we were using 16 channels for the main left and right uh, uh, system. Here you could see that we have the planning sheet for the lateral fields. Again, it is happening the same in the, in the right um, lateral fields processor. And in this case, we were getting four channels as some uh, main channels coming from, the, from, the, from another galaxy. In this case, we were using left and right signals that is going to the left section of the, of the system. Um, in here, you could see a, a small image. And I would like to use this as a reference because in this case, it, we are dealing with the left uh, section of the system. And in here, you could see the 90 degrees um, array. Then you see the, the lateral array system, a small front fields over here the ground subwoofer configuration, the main left, the subwoofer on the, this side as well. And I, I'm showing you this because as you could see, we are using this uh, processor to feed the lateral system that is in here, the 90 degree system that are these three, three channels for MICA for the 90 degree system. And we are using um, five channels for the front fields. And the reason I'm explaining this is because maybe you are asking yourself why we were getting left and right signal for this side of the uh, system. Well, we are doing that because we kind of need to be prepared uh, uh, for, for, for whatever the sound technician or the, the, the system tech or the front of house guys wants to do with these signals. I mean, imagine that right now, as I said, we are dealing with the left section of the system. And we want to have over the 90 degree system, just the left channel of the, of the signal. And then for the lateral system, we want to have the right channel because we are thinking that it's a good idea to have left and right in these two lateral systems. So in order to do that, we need to have in this processor left and right uh, signals. And, and, and that was why we did that because we didn't know before the show what they are want what they are want to uh, want to do with these two signals okay same same thing with the front fields because we don't really know what they want to do with those we need to be ready in case they need to have just left or or a combination with left and right signals over the the, the front okay and of course we got the backup signals for all these four channels just in case and for the subwoofers we got just one signal and the backup for, for, for it. And we were feeding the output as you could see over here. Remember that for the flam subwoofer uh, uh, configuration, we were using four channels. And for the floor or grand subwoofer array, we were using 10 channels as you could see over here, okay? And again, this is about the sub left and same thing with the, for the sub right uh, processing. In this case, we are having this processor that is gonna feed the, the whole relay system. You could see that we have the relay center, relay left and relay right over here. Remember that we were using six channels for the relay that is in the center and just five channels for the relay left and another five channels for the relay right. And I'm showing you this in here. And of course, we, get, we got uh, relay left and relay right signals, just in case we want to use whatever ideas we can have. We can use these two channels to feed. Maybe as we are showing here, 
for the center uh, relay, we are feeding a left and right signal to these uh, speakers by uh, getting the connection in the matrix uh, using minus six dB on the left and minus six dB on the right in order to get kind of the same signal as we are sending to one of the relays that are on, or on the left or, or, or on the right. Okay, for the subs on the relay sounds, we were using, remember, four channels. So we have this uh, eight channel total for that, that uh, those array in the subwoofer uh, area over the relay zone. And this is about the front of house galaxy. And in this case, as you could see, we were getting from a console, the left and the right channels. We also got the front field left and front field right uh, signals and one signal for the subs. We were getting those signals in an AS3 uh, way, I mean, the style of signals. So we did assign the inputs for that kind of uh, signals. And then we send uh, this left and right signal to the uh, channels that we need to in terms of the signals that we need to got on that uh, over that over those outputs. So as you can see here, we have uh, some images about the, the processor that we were dealing with. In this case, we have the left and right processors for, for the main left and right systems. So as you can see, we were getting main left channel and main right channels. Uh, and we were using output number one and output number nine for those channels. And in this case, for the lateral system and the front field system, we were getting four channels. Two of them were left, right for the left side of the system, left, right for the right side of the system. As you can see here, we got uh, the left uh, and right channel for the left section and the left and right channel for the right section. And we got the front field left and right for the left sections and front field left and right for the right section. So you could see how we were implemented this uh, assigns from input to outputs in the front of house uh, processor. We also be ready to get a second console, yes, just, just, just to, to, to get that uh, other console connected because I don't remember, but I think that the support band were using, yeah, these two inputs. Uh, I roughly remember that right now. Okay, so this is about the, 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 the configuration over the processors. And remember that we were using a planning sheet for this. So if you want to have this planning sheet, you just need to go to Meyer Sound web page and then to products, accessories, resources, and then you can have the planning sheet if you want. Okay, so the location for the processors, we were using four location in this case. Two of them were in the left, uh, uh, stage left and stage right uh, zone. And in here we have three processors and one switch. Of course, this switch uh, was able to manage an AVB signal. Uh, so in every single location besides the processor, we need one of these AVB switch in order to be AVB connected. Okay, another two locations were the front of house that has only one a galaxy and one switch and the other location was the center relay area where we got uh, two processors and one switch for uh, in order to be all with all of them connected we use uh, fiber optics and we run analog lines as a backup as you might, might remember okay these are the speakers I don't want to waste your time by going on every single model that we just use. I just wanna let you know that if you want to have this condensed information that is about the the, the, the speakers that we use, I can send it, send it to you by email if you want. Um, and okay, so far we have done these three topics. We know the real life scenario, the output processing channel distribution, and the, the planning sheet for these processors. So in here, I just want to very quickly tell you uh, some things about the, the galaxies. As, as you might know, the galaxy uh, has three, three models, galaxy 
408, Galaxy A16, and Galaxy A16 AS version. In this case, we were using Galaxy A16 in all of the nine processors. And in this case, we are seeing that in the rear section of the processor, we could see the eight inputs and the 16 outputs over here. And we have two Ethernet ports to, to, to connect the, the processors in order to get the, 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 by using the software Compass, we can connect to all of this processor or these two uh, ports could be used also to get all of them ABB connected, okay? So this is about uh, uh, the Galaxy processor. It's just a very quick uh, review. And now let's see uh, a practical work with Compass, okay? So Compass is the software that we use to manage the, the processors. If you want, you can download for free in, in the web page. And just remember, you need to use the, the, the right version for your computer. And by saying that, I'm gonna move to this other window where I have launched a Compass session in here. And as you can see, we are seeing a lot of tabs over here. So if I go to Compass tab, you can see that over this area, you, you, you have more tabs. So we have the Compass Preference tab, the Cal tab, Galaxy tab, RMS servers, uh, server preference tab. So we're gonna work in this zone with the Galaxy Preference tab. And we are going to be playing with these two tabs that are select isolated linking and global linking tab. Okay. And if I go to processor tab, I'm going to see the inventory over here. And as you remember, we were using nine processor. So uh, because I don't have any physical processor in my house right now. So if I click on find devices, I, 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 I got nothing because I don't have any real processor in here connected to my computer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a nine processor. And as you can see, this pop-up window is telling you what device type you want to, to have. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna use the Galaxy A16 because that was the model that we were using. And the entity name by default is Galaxy number one. I'm gonna give it that name. So I'm gonna add another eight processor in order to get nine processor ready uh, to play because Remember, this was the, the, the amount of uh, processors that we were using. I'm gonna use this column, the virtual column, to use all of them in a virtual way, okay? So you can do that as well if you want, or you are gonna see this video um, after this webinar. You could just follow the, the, the steps that I'm gonna follow right now, okay? As you can see over here, I have some names. Those are the names that we were using in, in, in that uh, show. So I'm gonna just go here and copy this number, this name, sorry, for these processors. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this tab. These tabs are telling you where uh, processor, what processor you using right now. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna use a Galaxy number one, okay? And, my, my computer is kind of slow right now, but it doesn't matter. So I'm, I'm right now in the Galaxy tab number one, then I go to settings, and then I go to network that is in here, and I can change the entity name for this uh, processor, and I'm gonna write down FOH, because this is the first processor I'm seeing over here, and then I'm gonna move to the other Galaxy, and this Galaxy is gonna have this name, main left, Okay, I'm gonna copy that and then I go here and I'm gonna paste that name and I'm gonna change main R and then I can also go here and then copy this name and I'm gonna paste over here. I'm gonna do the same for this other processor and I'm gonna change the, the letter for this one and now we have subs subs left, okay, same thing. I'm gonna copy this name, I'm gonna paste it over here. I'm gonna change the last letter, and then I need to have this name. I'm gonna copy it, okay. Let me do it again, copy, and then I'm gonna paste over here. And same thing with this name, 
Okay. And now I have all of names, uh, all the names ready. And I need to do something else. I'm going to copy this name that is a stadium. And I'm going to use the group name in, uh, in every single processor. I'm going to use stadium in the group name. And I need to do that because if I want to get all of them ABB connected, we need to have the same name group. Okay, that's why I'm doing this. Okay. Then, okay, so I have the group name uh, in all of the processors. Again, this is because we need to have the same name in order to be ABB connected. Okay, so if I go to inventory over here. I can see that I have the name, the names ready on every single processor. And now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add another processor because I want to play with this uh, extra processor. This is Galaxy number one. I'm going to go there and I'm going to play with this processor a little bit. So if you, if you see, we are right now in the overview tab. And here we can have uh, these uh, outputs in a mute style or on mute style. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change a little bit this uh, section of the gain. I'm going to change this gain to minus two and this other gain to minus three and this other gain to minus four. I'm going to change the delay time as well. I'm going to use three. Uh, six and nine milliseconds okay and the reason I'm doing that is because I want to show you the way we can work with the select isolate and linking mode okay I'm gonna go back to my presentation for, 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 for a minute because I want to explain to you that in this case the select isolate and linking has these modes to play with and in this case I want to um, work with these two options that are gain control linking mode and delay control linking mode. I use these keywords as a reference and in this case we can use these linking modes in an absolute way or a relative way. Okay, The default option is relative so I want to play with that first and as you can see the gain control and the delay control linking mode right now but I'm both of them are in the relative uh, way, okay? So if I do that, I can just select in this column, these four channels in order to play with all of them at the same time. And you're gonna change a little bit the gain. And as you can see, the gain is changing in a relative way, okay? Same thing with the, with the delay. I'm changing the delay and every single channel is changing in a relative way. If I add just one millisecond, so every single output is changing by one millisecond and the channels that are right now selected, okay? That means that I'm using uh, the relative option in, in the delay and gain control link mode. If I change to the absolute uh, mode, you know that it's gonna, happen this. If I just write write down nine dBs, every channel that is that is with the relative uh, mode in this case. Okay, we have the link groups as well. And if I go back again to my uh, presentation, you could see that we have these uh, keywords highlighted. Uh, the link groups can work always selected in groups or link it independently and in addition, okay? In this case, the keyword is always selected in groups. Let's see what, what we're just 
saying with this um, option, okay? Remember that I'm using the always selected in groups option. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this link uh, column. In this case, I can just go there and uh, enable the group number one, and I'm gonna use this channel for group number one. I'm gonna do the same with this channel two, and if I, Going to if I want to work this very quickly, I can go to settings. Then I can use link group uh, tab, and I am going to add two more channels, and, and I'm going to enable this group number two, and I'm going to select another four channels. Okay, so now we have these two link groups: link group number one, link group number two. And if I just click on one new, uh, I'm seeing that. It is changing only the, in the channel that I am playing with the mute, but not the other ones. So what we need to do is to select in the select column one of these group, and now those channels are linking together, okay? Same thing with the other group. And if I select both groups, now we have a bigger group to play with, okay? So in order to play in this kind of link mode, as I mentioned, we need to always select the groups that we are playing with. If you select this mode that uh, is, it, is telling you that the link is independent in addition to the selected channels, we're gonna see that right now, as soon as I mute one of the channels that are in one group, all of the channels of the group are mute right now, okay? So that means that the link groups are always linked together. So. I, this is the way I like to, 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 to work. So I'm gonna live in that mode right now. And, okay, and now we have these uh, options for the isolated linked mode. The keywords for that option are not be include and be include when linking, okay? So let's see uh, not be include. Not be include option in the isolated linking mode. So remember that right now we have uh, done for uh, link groups, okay? So I'm gonna isolate in this column for this group the output number two and see what is gonna happen. As soon as I click on mute on the channels that are in that group, not the one that is isolated, nothing happened with the isolated channel. So the isolated, the isolated channel, it's isolated, it's isolated but by itself, as you can see, okay? That means that we are using the not be include option in the linking mode for the isolated uh, tool, okay? That's, that's why we are isolating this channel and the other channels are not related to the one that is isolated. If I change the option, right now we're gonna change for the be include option. Let's see what is gonna happen. Remember, the channel two is the one that is isolated and I'm gonna click on channel number one, for example, or channel number three or channel number four. And as you can see, we are affecting the channel that is isolated right now. So this is the option that is telling you the isolated is included in the link channel that you are playing with, okay? Of course, that the channel is isolated by itself, but it is affected by the other channels as well, okay? So I like to use um, this option that is not include, that will not be include the isolated channel uh, for the groups that we are working with. Okay, that's it with this extra processor. I'm gonna disconnect this processor. I'm gonna remove it because I just wanna have the nine processors that we were working in this, in the, in this um, example. And now I'm gonna move my presentation to the global linking preference, where we are gonna global link the processor in different ways. As you could see, we're gonna use the first one that is telling you that the global ga galaxy setting are uh, selected in channels on the devices in, in a globally linked way. I mean, all selected channels on the galaxies that are selected are globally linked. Let's see how to do that. First, I would like to uh, tell you that we have this link column where we can link many of these processors together, okay? And we have also this column that 
is about the ID of the processors. And we can use the ID as a way to group those processors in a very interesting way. Because imagine that you're gonna work with the main left processor. I think that you need to have the same changes over the main right processor because it's the same system, okay? I think in the same way with the lateral fields left and lateral fields right because you're gonna do the same in both processors and same thing with the, lat, uh, with the sub left and sub right. So what I wanna do is to select the ID number to got the number two for these two guys, number three for the lateral fields systems and number four for the subwoofers. So that means that we have right now um, these two processors link it together using ID number two, these two using number three, and the subwoofer left and right using number four. And we are linking in this column, this processor. We don't need to link this other group because we don't want to change uh, those processor in the same way because those processors have different um, systems that they are gonna work with. Okay, if I go to these tabs where we can see the main left and right, um, processors, you could see that on the top of the uh, tab, you could see a small line, a green line. Same thing with the lateral fields and right fields. You could see that only these two guys are having this uh, line on the top. Same thing for the sub left and right, okay? So in order to work with this kind of global linking, I'm gonna use left and right as a reference. And I wanna show you that right now, if I go to compass, uh, global linking, I'm using the first mode that is telling you that all selected channels on the selected Galaxy device are globally linked. And again, I'm gonna do an exercise to let you know what is happening in here. If I do select these four channels, remember that we are linked to the right section of, of, of the processor as well. If I click on mute, what I'm seeing is that this is not affecting this other uh, galaxy, okay? So what I need to do is to select the channels that, are, that I, I would like to change in both or in any uh, processor that are linked together right now, okay? So if I do that, I'm gonna click in mute over here, and it's mute over this area as well. And if I uh, select uh, for main left processor, the channel number 11 as well, I'm gonna mute this or unmute, I'm gonna mute it again. And this change won't happen in this 11 channel for the main right processor. The reason for that is because I only changing whatever I'm changing on the selected channels on the selected uh, processors, okay? And because I don't have the 11 uh, output channels selected in here, it is not changing while I'm changing on this side. So you need to select whatever channels you wanna uh, link together in both uh, processor in order to have those changes ready uh, to play. The other option that we have in here is that the selected channels on the Active Galaxy tab are linked in the same channels by letter or number on the other Galaxy devices. This second option, okay, I'm just select the, that option. Actually, you can see the, the colors of the link groups are changing. Right now, if I do that, I only need to select the channels on one of the galaxies to affect the other galaxies that are linked in this group, okay? So you don't need to go to the other galaxy and select those same channels, but you only need to select the ones that you need to uh, change in for some reason, okay? Same thing in this case. If I select uh, channel 15 and 16 for from this tab, the main right uh, processor tab, I'm gonna play with those and that change is gonna happen here as well. So you only need to select the channels you wanna play um, in one of the tabs and that's it. You're gonna change uh, the same things in the other galaxies that are in that uh, group. The third option that you might use is this one. And this has the keywords telling you that all channels are always linked in this 
to the same channels by letter or number on the other galaxies. So that means that if we are using these options right now, and I go to processors, every single channel, just see that I am not using any selected channel in any of these two guys. Any channel right now is linking to the same channel on the other processor. As you can see, I'm muting channel number two in the processor main left, and it is happening in the uh, main right also, okay? So you only need to uh, play with one of these tabs and you're gonna copy uh, uh, the same uh, change in the other galaxy. This is very convenient because if you are dealing with the main left and right system and, and, I, and, and you need to, let's say, change a little bit the gain, I just can select all of the channels by clicking Shift and Command I'm using this uh, shortcut to select all of them. And I'm gonna decrease by one dB the outputs. So I did in the left uh, processor and it is happening in the right processor as well as you, as you could see. So this is very really convenient because it's like a mirror option between these two galaxies. And it is really convenient when you are dealing with the same amount of the speaker from left to right. So this is the way I like to, to play. And we have also some uh, two options in this case. So we have the isolated modes in this case that you, you, you could use enable or disable for this option. Let's play first with the default that is disabled. So that means that the isolated mode is gonna be disabled in the global linking channels. Okay, so let's play with that. Uh, so we are in the global linking tab. Now we are using the disable global linking or of isolated channel. That means that if I do select this uh, option that is isolating all of the channels, and you could see that the, the, the right processor is not getting that isolation. What, what is gonna happen if I mute Unmute, sorry, this channel uh, uh, one in the main left processor that it's having the isolation on, uh, on all the channels. So as you can see, the mute is changing just in this processor, but not in the other, on the other one, okay? So imagine that you are right now having your left and right system ready to play pink noise over there. You are able to, ping, to, to, to play pink noise on, on both, uh, systems, maybe it's a good idea to test every single output in order to hear what is happening, what is coming out from, from the system. So if you isolate this processor, you won't affect the other one. So that means that you're only hearing the left, uh, uh, the left main array system in order to see if, if it is working in a good way, okay? Okay, so you can do the same thing for the other side. Just go to the other uh, uh, galaxy. You could isolate the to this processor command. When I mute this, I'm gonna unselect the, the whole processor. And now let's play with the global linking um, mode enable, okay? In this case, what what is gonna happen? Let's see. If I do select these channels, as you can see, the background is not changing as, as we saw in the last, uh, in the previous options. So what does, that means that the, as soon as I unmute this channel, it is gonna happen in the other galaxy, okay? So how this isolated mode then is working? Well, it is working the opposite way. I mean, if I go to the main right processor and I unmute the channel number one, Let's see what happened in this. 
it doesn't change, okay? So in this case, you're isolating the, the, the processor that are not having the isolation. <laughs> it's kind of weird, but it, it is the way it, it is happening because you are right now isolating these channels to, to, to get the changes from the other processor. That's the way it is working right now. And I don't know if you, but I do prefer to work with the default mode that is the one that, that is telling you that in the process of where you are uh, working, you can isolate this change from the other processor. That's the way I like to play with this uh, um, way of isolation, okay? So this is about the global linking preference. And now that we have done these uh, topics, I'm gonna work with the global linking just to use uh, some other tools. Well, in this case, we can just take advantage of the way we're just um, global linking the processors to do this thing. As you remember, we were having this names on the output size of the processor. So I just can copy one of these names and I'm gonna paste over here and then just can repeat the process, this process to, 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 get, to get all these um, outputs using the names that we were using in our planning sheet, okay? So I just need to change the last number in order to be ready and of course I don't want to waste your time by doing all this so I just want to do this example and so that we're going to change our um, way to show this thing okay because I of course have a, a global project store and I don't need to do this thing from the beginning I just want to do for this to processor because I want to show you that as soon as you change the name for this processor, those, those names are going to change in the other because we have like the mirror option in, in, in this one. So remember that we also were having just um, two input signals for this galaxy. So I'm going to just copy and paste this one, I'm gonna change the name for this guy. And, sorry, I'm gonna use capital over here. Uh, main right, okay. And I don't need these names in the input side, okay. And as soon as you have the output names and the input names, you could also go to this um, section that is the zooming matrix where you are gonna connect the inputs to the outputs. Uh, I click on that, I go to zooming matrix tab and if I do uh, shift and command or shift, or, or shift control, if you have a Windows PC, you can just click on these uh, channels in order to get all of them connected. So right now, if I go to the overview tab, you could see that I got the main right and the backup signals connected to uh, all the 16 outputs right now, okay? So you could do that, and you can also do the same thing with the other processor, but I don't want to waste your, your time by doing that. So what I wanna do right now is to go to uh, inventor, inventory, and in the lower section of this window, you could see that we have global project and global snapshot. If you are not seeing those, it's because you are not uh, having this option uh, uh, ready to play. So you need to select the show global project features in order to see these options. And if I go to the open project, you could see that I have this global project file that was stored for that concert. So you're gonna open it. And as you can see, because I have the same names as I did for this show, I'm kind of getting ready for, for these eight uh, galaxies because the names are the same, but 
I'm not having the same name in the last one. As you could see, the last letter that is the R is in capital in this project, but it's not in here. So what I'm gonna do is to cancel this for a minute and go to that galaxy and then go to settings, the network, and in here I can change the last letter to a capital one. And now that I did it, I can just go back to the mm, Galaxy Global Project option. I'm gonna open the global show that is Chingon. That's a good name. And now I'm gonna upload, uh, uh, apply the settings that was stored for those, for those um, processors and I'm gonna upload the project, okay? This pop-up window is telling you that you are able to exclude the following setting if you want. And the only option that I always using is the input and output mutes. That means that if you are right now with all your processors in a real life scenario and all of them are mute, I don't remember if my uh, global snapshot were muted, were sto uh, was stored with uh, mutes on or not. So because I don't remember, I would like to keep the mutes as I am having all of them right now that are mute just in case of any kind of weird noise that could come out from one of the outputs. So in order to do that, I exclude the input and output mutes and I mute physically all of the input and output just, just to be um, uh, careful with that. Or yeah, just, just, just I, I just did that in that case as well. So I click in yes and I don't need to open an RMS data because I don't have it. And now, um, I can go to the global snapshot options and in here I have different um, uh, uh, snapshots. I want to use the pre-show snapshot, I want to recall it. And the reason I'm doing that is because uh, I did my work, I did my homework and in this case as you can see I have the names in the inputs, the names in the outputs for every every single processor that we were using for this show of course you can store this and uh, you can work as a virtual way as we are doing right now and after uh, you have all your planning sheet planning sheet ready you can just store this in your computer and when you are in front of the real processor you can upload all of these uh, pres presets and you're going to be ready okay so in this case uh, what i'm seeing is that in the left and right uh, processor we have done the the zooming matrix but we don't have that section done in the rest of the processor so what i'm gonna do right now is just to right click over here and i'm gonna load the lateral lateral uh left uh, fields and i have done this right now and now you have your matrix done so if you want to save this you just need to right click over there and then save and you name that uh, file and then you're gonna be ready to after that just uh, do what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna uh, load the uh, relay center center left right. So I did it. Same thing with the subwoofers. It is done. This is good. This is good. This is good. Okay. The main left and right was done, so the front of house, I need to change that one. Let me just go there, here, okay. Right click, come on, I'm gonna upload the front of house galaxy, and this is it. This is done right now. Okay, the last two slides is gonna be, uh, I'm almost finished, guy. Uh, about the starting point, and um, actually, there was a webinar that Mr. Merlin did about the product uh, integration. If you wanna see more about this, it's a good idea to see that uh, webinar. But in this case, I'm gonna talk about the starting point. That means that if you are having 12 speakers as we are right now having in here, you can just use one speaker to see what is gonna happen uh, with just one speaker in terms of the amplitude and phase response. And as you could see, by using just one leper speaker, you are getting this amplitude response that has less energy in the lower section of the frequency than in the highest uh, section. And the reason for that is that uh, 
when you are playing with all of these speakers, you're gonna get more energy, more level, you're gonna add more level in the amplitude response over the lower section than in the higher. They, this is because of the um, kind of uh, directivity that we are having in just one single box that, has, that is omnidire omnidirectional in the lower section and very, very narrow in the highest portion of the spectrum. So that's why we're getting more um, energy over here and not that much over this area. So in order to get a very good starting point amplitude response, we need to have uh, every single speaker having this kind of amplitude response, less energy in the lower section and more energy in the upper section. And as you could see over here, we have the models that we were using for this show. And I, I do, oh, sorry. Uh, I do something special because I match the amplitude response and about one kilohertz for all of these models in order to have kind of this same uh, amplitude in all of them. As you can see, this, the pink uh, trace is telling you what is happening in the leper box that as I showed you, it has less energy over the lower section than in the high uh, section of the frequency. So we need to apply the starting point to get all of these boxes in a kind of the same amplitude response as the leopard uh, box or the leopard speaker. Okay, so that's about the starting point. And we have here another thing that is the, the PC. The PC is telling you where this speaker is having a 180 degrees of offset in terms of the uh, phase response, okay? What I'm saying is that you, if you see the response for the mica that is in here, in this uh, kind of blue color, you are seeing that actually all of the, the speakers are kind of having the same phase response over here. As soon as you go down in frequency, you are getting a small change over here. And if you go to 30, 350 hertz in case of the mica, you are getting 180 degrees offset in the phase response. So this number is gonna be the PC for that speaker. If you could see the Leo speaker is having a PC 100. So if you go, uh, uh, you, if you follow the phase response for the Leo speakers, you're gonna see that you're reaching the 180 degrees uh, in 100 hertz. So that's why we are having a Leo PC 100. This is the native of, of the natural, let's say, uh, phase response for that speaker. And if you are thinking about lion and leopard, we're seeing that the phase is, is changing to 180 in about 55 Hertz. So with this different kind of PC responses, we are not able to get a very good uh, behavior when we are working with all of these speakers together. So we need to kind of have all the same PC in order to, 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 to match all of the faces for these speakers. And we're gonna do that, of course. So the, the way uh, that we can use, the way that, that, that we can uh, play with this is like I'm showing you right now. If I select all of the outputs, remember that we are having the left and right system. I'm gonna unselect just these two channels because those are about the Lion W and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the product integration column. And if I click on there, uh, I'm gonna choose the Leo M speakers. I'm gonna select the PC 125 and I'm doing that because the mica is, is, is having a PC 100, uh, 125 as the, the lowest uh, PC in, in this example. Okay, so I'm gonna use the starting point that is telling you that you're gonna decrease a little bit the lower section and increase a little bit the higher section. And I'm gonna use the Leo M narrow, the standard one. Okay, I'm gonna click on okay. And this pop-up window is telling you that if you wanna mix a Leo with a Lion speaker, you need to add 8.05 milliseconds to Leo. So we're taking care of that. And right now you could see that the product integration is telling you that this box is, is having a PC 125 and you, we are getting this starting point that decrease a little bit this uh, range of the frequency and has these other things in the uh, upper section. So we're gonna do the same for the other uh, speakers, in this case, the Lion. I'm gonna select the product, Lion, starting point, 
PC125. And then this is about Lion W. I want to use the standard starting point. I'm going to click on OK, and that's it. You are getting the starting point for that box as uh, uh, speakers as well. And of course, you can do the same for the other ones. I don't want to waste your time, as I told you. So I'm going to do just uh, the, the last example by clicking on the pro forward facing subwoofers in this uh, processor. So I'm selecting just the forward facing channels. And I'm going to go to product. I'm going to select, in this case, the 1100. Uh, and I'm going to use the PC 125. And in this case, the starting point is telling you about the forward or the rear facing um, subwoofer. So I'm using the forward facing. I click on OK. And this pop up window is telling you that. Uh, you need to take care of the uh, uh, crossover face align in your system. Don't think that by doing this, you are okay with that. So you need to work in that um, optimization uh, because this uh, product integration stuff is not aligning your system as you might think. Okay. So now, in the case of uh, in, in, for for the rear facing subwoofers, I'm gonna use the rear facing starting point, and I click OK. The pop-up window is telling me the same thing. You need to work with your face online, and that's it. We are right now having the starting point for this gradient array configuration by uh, having the polarity reverse and this 5.2 milliseconds. Okay, so. We can do the same for the other uh, processor, but as I told you, I don't want to waste your time. So I did it. And this other uh, snapshot, the global, this global snapshot is going to show you that this is done after uh, some minutes of work. We have the product integration in, in every single um, processor. So what we did right now is to just play with the global snapshot and the and the global project and by doing that if i right now uh, create a new one let's say my last example this is the active uh, snapshot right now that i just create if i close this if i go to every single um processor <laughs> We're going to store that snapshot in every single um, processor. And by using the global project, if you save this global project, you're going to retrieve the, 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 the projects that you are working with, and you're going to save as a global project in your computer. And I'm going to show you that when you are doing that, you're going to store every single Galaxy project uh, in a separately or, or in a different um, file, and you have uh, the global project as well. So this is because as soon as you sorry, click on save, in here you could see that you're saving individual projects for every single uh, Galaxy, OK? So this is it. We just uh, work with the global project for this show. Um, I just want to tell to to tell you that this show was great, and we got a lot of uh, speakers over there, and it was amazing. So I am finishing. I would like to thank you all for this time. And uh, if you see, we have these uh, two QR codes. If you go to this, you're going to see some videos about Galaxy. And if you go to the right QR uh, option, you're going to email me if you have some question. But before you are going to email me, please see the videos. OK? And this is it. Hello, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Um, awesome, Oscar. Great Thank explanation. You. Thank you very much. Um, so I think we have uh, maybe two, three, four minutes left for any questions. Okay. Uh, there was one question during the chat. 
or, or during the session um, that basically asked, this is my understanding of that question, which was um, you did all your homework in advance to the show. Uh, did anything uh, change on site as you were commissioning the system? Yes, we did the work uh, like uh, two weeks before. Uh, we take advantage of the knowing the, the, that we know what equipment we will have in that uh, show. And uh, we did some changes in, in there as well because uh, we were expecting to, to have less buffers, but at the end we got more and well, we used them and it was great. So we did, but we were ready to do some of those changes. Excellent. Thank you for answering that question. So John Sharp rose his hand. Go for John. Uh, please type your question in the um, chat box. And John says, do you have to save individual project files or is everything saved in the global file? Um, is everything saved when, while, while you're using the global project saving section, you're saving uh, every single project for every single uh, processor. I mean, as soon as you click on the global project saving thing, you're saving individual as well. And yeah. As I showed you in your computer, you are having those files uh, independently. Then we have a question from Cesar, who says, "How much time does it take to adjust the entire system with all those processors in a normal situation?" You mean the 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 the, the, the optimization work for that, or so, just for the processors? At Cesar, are you talking about the homework, the preparation, or are you talking about the calibration of the system? during uh the, the optimization well um, um as far as i remember we we did it in 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 different time frames because we were not able to have we were not able to have the whole system uh, at one time but we were using like two the total amount of time i think it, it was like let's say six hours or something like that because it was a a big stadium, as you remember. Okay, and then we have uh, Sam Zuckerman, who is raising his hand. Go for Sam. Uh, by the way, uh, in another cases, or another uh, shows, we are doing the optimization in just like an hour because you only have that hour. <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, a tuning takes as long as, as until somebody says stop. Exactly. So Sam Zuckerman asks, is it possible to have a, a global project for a system that is uh, that consists of uh, Galaxy uh, as well as Callisto devices? Not in that case, you need to work with them uh, 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 separately. I mean, you need to do the global thing for the Galaxies and the global thing for the Galaxy and Callisto. And also That's different, right. yeah, different compass versions. That's right. Exactly. Okay, um, why don't you import your project from MapXT? Well, we're not prepared to answer that question. Exactly. <laughs> That's true. Okay, um, any other questions at this point? Well, in that case, um, the uh, planning sheet that um, Oscar uh, discussed earlier today, um, the planning sheet can be downloaded at the website. If you go to uh, products on the MyerSound website, um, you can go to the uh, Galaxy devices. And once you go to the Galaxy devices, you can go to the resources. And under resources, a drop down menu, you will find the Galaxy planning sheet. Um, so you can download that there. And as for the um, recording of today's webinar, that recording, as always, once finished, can be found on the YouTube Thinking Sound uh, channel by Myersound. And that only leaves me to uh, thank Oscar uh, very much and to inform you that uh, the next webinar will take place this Wednesday and we'll, be, uh, we'll have another guest lecture, which will be um, Juan Sierra and he will talk about audio basics, the part you were never told. Okay, everyone stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you the next time. Okay, thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.